This is what motivates God to allow trials in your life so that you will not be retained and detained and kept mm. in the dust of the grave and experience eternal shame. What God wants for you is eternal glory for you to shine like the stars of the heavens because that's what he created you for. Because why? This is where he Hello everyone and thank you for joining us once again at the Biblical Perspective on YouTube. You're with myself Colleen and with Pedro and we'll be taking today's Bible study with you. And we're continuing in our series um, entitled um, In the Crucible with Christ and we're on our fourth study today which is entitled Seeing the Goldsmith's Face. Um, before we go any further into this study I'm going to start with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you once again for enabling us to be here to study your word. Lord, I pray that you will be with this study. I pray that you will be with those who are, who, are, who are viewing. I pray that they'll be blessed, Lord, and I pray that our words will be your words. Lord, continue to be with us, continue to be with this ministry, and continue to, to bless this ministry. And I pray that this ministry continues to bless others. I ask these things in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. So Pedro, um, last week we spoke about trials and um, even before that we, we, um, we spoke about suffering in our um, previous studies and um, I wanted to discuss more relating to trials in um, this week's study and um, I wanted to go straight into the questions. So my first question is, how should we understand the relationship between mature faith and trials? I mean, is there a relationship and how do we, how do we understand that? There is definitely a, a, a relationship and the way to understand it is the same way we understand the relationship between learning and mastering okay. or mastering and learning. Um, how do you get to master anything? Well, you, you have to, at, well, you have to at least start doing that thing and then you have to practice and then after so much time of practicing, you become more skilled until you become at a point where you become like, like, a, like you master that particular so, skill or topic. So mastering is the last stage of a process yes it is and that process happens in the time mm -hmm. and that process involves learning yes it does and it takes time energy resources mm -hmm. and then you come to master yeah so mastering is not just learning but learning for sure or knowing for sure yeah. is that yeah fair it's, to say yeah it's like within like within like say the working environment that person would be like an expert or a consultant so it's not the same as somebody who is trying to know no or it's not someone who's just come to learn that topic all right now your question is, is there a relationship between, between mature, faith mature faith and trials? And trials? Mm -hmm. Let's look at what the Bible says when we already made the difference between knowing is not the same thing as learning to know. Okay, let's go to Job chapter 1 and read verse 1. Okay, so Job 1 um, verse 1 and it says, in the land of Uz, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. What are his qualities? He's blameless, he's upright, he fears God and he shuns evil. That's a good man, isn't it? Yeah, very. That's a Christian man, isn't he? Yes, definitely. That's a just man, isn't he? Mm -hmm. He has arrived, spiritually speaking. <laughs> yes. Has he not? <laughs> yes, he has. But what happens in the story then is he is attacked by some sort of... Everything, uh, really. Yeah, everything. So he loses everything, he included lose everything. his health and his, his reputation, children, his children, his, finances, his properties, his, his friends, finances, everything. everything. The only thing that is left is his wife. And we're not going to go into this, but that's the only thing that is, that is left 
to him he loses everything including health and reputation let's read another text in the story at some other point in the story just quickly I think an important point about this is that um, the declaration of who Job is actually comes from God himself correct so that's a good point so that shows that who this man really is yes but not in this verse later on yes okay so so let's read Job chapter 17 and verse 6 please and then we will go to Job chapter 30 verses 1 and 10 so for now 17 verse 6 of the book of Job and it says God has made me a byword to everyone a man in whose face people spit not only does he lose his reputation mm -hmm. and his status in the community but he comes to the conclusion that God has made that happen to him yeah. that's very important Colleen he comes to the conclusion God has made that happen to him personally now let's read verse chapter 30 we said and verses 1 and 10 he's lost his reputation people spit in his face people who would have um, respected him are now spitting in his face um, Job 30, 1 and um, 10, and it says, But now they mock me, men younger than I, whose fathers I would have disdained to put with my sheep dogs. And um, 10 reads, They detest me and keep their distance. They do not hesitate to spit in my face. Again, so... This is hard. The brother is coming back to that several times after he has lost everything. He has no standing in the community. He is despised. And people he would not hire even to be with his dogs yes. are seeing him as less as a dog and they spit in his face. That's hard. Yes. And he says it all comes from God's doing. Mm. trials and but remember is, mm. to put that in context this is a man of faith yeah I was gonna say this is a man that that you know if you read further on in the story declares you know how how good the Bible gives is. the testimony about him four characteristics of mm. you would dream to so, enter that category yes, as a Christian mm. now let's fast forward to the end of the story and let's go to the last chapter Let's read verse uh, chapter 42, verses 1 to 6. What happens there? Okay, 42, 1 to 6, and it says, Then Job replied to the Lord, I know that you can do all things. No plan of yours can be thawed. You, you asked, who is this that obscures my counsel without knowledge? Surely I spoke of things I did not understand, things too wonderful for me to know. You said, listen now and I will speak. I will question you and you shall answer me. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. Wow, what a confession. He starts off, the text starts off by telling you how righteous and good and perfect and shunning evil this man is. He is so close to God, but at the end of the season yes, of trials that he had, intense trials. he despised his own self. He despised his own self in the light of God. God's revelation to him about would that be mature faith now? Yes. So your but question, then you wonder, well, how mature can you be than than that declaration that was made in? But then he, it took him some kind of heat in the crucible mm -hmm. to get even higher. Right? Are you with me? Okay. That's mature faith now, and he says, you know, all this stuff you heard about me at, at the beginning—that was nothing. Now I had heard 
What you said about, about me at the beginning was based on what I had heard. But where I am now is based on what I have seen. Mm -hmm. My ears had heard of you, but now my eyes see you. The difference is trials. The result is mastering faith, mature faith. So it doesn't matter where you start in your journey. It does not matter. He started at a good place. Yes. But it doesn't matter where you start to reach where God is. You need to take a journey. It doesn't matter who you are. To reach where God is, you need to take a journey. Because where God is, is mature faith. And it will take trials. Nobody will make it without that. Mm. But Pedro, um, how can we actually reach where God is? And like... If you look at the story of Job, like if you look at all what he went through, it was a lot like most people or a lot of people wouldn't be able to to withstand and to continue in faith under such extreme trials. So how do we actually reach where God is? It depends on how you look at the question. It depends on how you look at where God is. And I invite you to read for me in the book of Genesis. That's where we're going to start with answering this question. The book of Genesis, you read chapter 1, verse 26 for me, please. And it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Okay. So what does the first part say? Let us make a man in our image. So which means that your question is how do we reach where God is? But we need to consider that this is not an impossible task. Why? Because we started where he was. Okay. Are you with me? Yes. So it depends on how you look at the question. We started where he was. So it's not a foreign or, or crazy thing to think that we can be back to where God is. Yeah. And then when we talk about where God is, we're talking about God's image, aren't we? Are you with me? We're not talking about a physical place. We, we, we're talking about God's image. The problem between this start and where we are now is we decided to part way with God through Adam. We decided to part ways with God and therefore we went away. But did God leave it like this? No, he did not. Why? Because being away from God is not a good place for you. You know that God knows that. Therefore, he's going to do something about it. So reaching where God is, is attainable. Okay. Attainable. Yes. Reaching where God is, is in fact where we should be. an objective yes. that God has for you and you should have for yourself. Now, how is that going to happen? I invite you to read for me um, John chapter 1 verse 18. We parted ways with God and we went to hide from him. But is he going to leave us there or is he going to try everything to bring us where he is? Mm -hmm. So um, John 1 18 says no one has ever seen God but God the one and only who is at the father's side has made him known okay the text is speaking about Christ coming and revealing the image of God so that everyone could see what the image of God is like so Jesus is the image of God. That's the step that God took yes. for you to go back to where you were at the beginning so that you can be where he is. Are you with me? Yes. Let's continue the, the, the process. Colossians chapter 1 verses 11 to 15, please. Colossians 1, 12 to 15, and it read, 
giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. Again, the text tells us that God did not leave us where we are so that we can keep hiding from him. But through Christ, who is the expressed image of himself, he has made sure that provision is available for us to return to him and be where he is yes. in terms of his image mm. through Christ. Are you with me? Yes, I am. So when we ask the question, how can we be where God is? The answer is Christ Jesus. Mm. God has provided this for us so that we can be where he is. The next text I want you to read for me is Romans chapter 8, verse 29, please. Um, before we go to Romans um, 8 and 29, um, I just think this is just so amazing. It says he's the image of the invisible God. It's like wanting to know who, who, who is this God that we serve, who is this invisible God. And we're told that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And that has nothing to do with what color he is. <laughs> so Romans 8, um, 29 reads, for, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be confirmed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. So what we see here is Jesus is the way that God has provided. And through Jesus, because your question is, how can we reach where God is? We reach where God is by accepting Christ. And we accept Christ because he is the intermediary. He is the one who reflects the image of God and who gives us the power to now bear the image of God again so that we can reach where God is and be with him. And the Bible says God has predestinated or, or predestined anyone who accepts Christ to bear that image again, which Jesus came to show us yes. what it is like. Yeah, he came to, sh to be the ultimate example. That's correct. So how does this actually work practically? Um, let's read how it works in the book of Hebrews. Okay. If you go to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8, and we will see how it practically works. That's a very good question. Um, how we can bear the image of God through Christ. Okay, Hebrews 5, 8. Although he was a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal sal salvation for all, for, for all who obey him. Okay. So it goes back to this whole idea of suffered and suffering that we've discussed previously. The image of God is born in us through the fact that we go through a process of life that will allow us to be reconnected to him and Jesus showed us exactly how that works. That works by submission by to, him, to him. Jesus said, I have come to do the will of my father. When he was in the garden, he says, Father, is it possible that this cup passes? And I know you can do all things. However, not what I want, but what you want, because he submitted to the father. Now, obedience is key in this. And there are at least three things that we need to be doing. The first one is rejecting what is ungodly. Yes. Jesus rejected that which was ungodly. The second one is acquiring that which is godly. Mm. Jesus did everything 
he could to learn how to acquire in his human nature without comparing ourselves to Jesus. Because we know that although he had our nature, he was not a sinner. Mm -hmm. So without comparing ourselves to Jesus, we can learn those three things from him. Rejecting that which is ungodly, one. Acquiring that which is godly, two. And keeping what God has entrusted us with. Jesus did those three things. And I, again, I say, even when we do not compare ourselves with Jesus, he was sinless, but he bore our nature. We can learn those three things from him. Rejecting that which is ungodly, Rejecting. acquiring that acquiring. which is godly, and keeping what keeping. God has entrusted us mm -hmm. with. Are you with me? Okay, that's that's um, that's excellent. So, um, um, rejecting, acquiring, and keeping. Yeah. Okay. That's Thank bearing you. the image of God. Yes. Okay. So, um, my final question um, relating to um, this 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 study study number four um, is going back to this whole idea of um, of of being tried and suffering. So um, my question is, um, why is it so important for God that we are tried when he knows that we suffer in the process? So God knows that we go through the suffering and, and like suffering for, means so many different things to so many different people. And in fact, some people actually leave God and turn back during this period of suffering. So why, so, so why does God... Why is it so important to God that we go through this? We need to refer to everything that we've said before in our previous studies. The fact that we live in this world, which is a war zone, and everyone will go through suffering, yes. including Christians and even more so Christians, because at the end of it, there is an eternal weight of glory that will come through that. But in the context of bearing the image of God, we see the example of Jesus, it's the exact same thing. Jesus went through the suffering he needed to suffer. And I invite you to uh, actually read in Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 and 15, what... Um, Is it Hebrews 4? Hebrews 4. Hebrews 2, sorry. Hebrews 2, um, 14 and 15. Okay, Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. It says, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him whose hold the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who are and free and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. What did Jesus experience and why did he experience it? Suffering, he experienced pain. suffering and pain mm -hmm. so that what? So that we may get out of ultimate suffering and pain. Yes. So it is important, your question is why is it so important to God that we are tried, we are tried even though, even it, though caused, it causes us to suffer. suffer yes. The suffering that we go through, and this is what Peter says in many instances, is a suffering that actually leads us into a state of relief from eternal death. Because in this life, you would then suffer if God does not try you Yes. You then go through a world of suffering anyway yes, to end up in a place where you will be destroyed forever. Whereas, if you are tried by God and you, you, you suffer some pain. And his image is perfected in you. Then you end up where he is. Mm -hmm. In the same way, Jesus having persevered and having won the victory and having given you the way out of the prison, the prison cell of death in which this world with the enemy has kept everyone through sin. Mm -hmm. When Jesus dies, he removes the God 
Yes. When the Bible says, I haven't got time to go through this, but when the Bible says the, the, the gates of hell will not prevail against the, 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 the church of Christ, the imagery in there is that Christ is going right through the gates of hell right into hell we understand the great death and there he snatches those who accept the message and if the gates close back on him to prevent him from going out with the souls that he has just redeemed they cannot because he has won yes. the right to have these gates open yes. so that you can walk out of death mm which the Bible calls hell, yeah. but it is, it is the grave, death. Jesus, through his suffering and pain, went through that so that death cannot hold you. Yes. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Therefore, you now need to walk with this Christ. Yes. But you walk through this Christ towards the goal of eternal salvation. You walk with this Christ in this world with your human nature. You walk, you, you, you walk with this Christ in this war zone that we call the world. And you walk with this Christ with your limitations that need to be removed yes. so that you can count only on God because that's the only way those limitations that limitate you and keep you in darkness will be removed things of the chi think of the children of Israel in the previous study that we had are you with me now this is what awaits those who go through this process if you go to Daniel chapter 12 and you read verses 1 to 3 for me please the whole the whole reason for this whole process of suffering and pain is the same as the process of gold being read of dross so that it can be worn with all its beauty mm -hmm. pure yes. um, Daniel 12 1 to 3 and it says at that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people will arise. There will be a time of distress such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who led many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is what motivates God to allow trials in your life so that you will not be retained and detained and kept. Mm in the dust of the grave and experience eternal shame. What God wants for you is eternal glory for you mm -hmm. to shine like the stars of the heavens because that's what he created you for. Because why? This is where he is and you bear his image. That's how it needs to go. You don't need to be lost. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you for that study, Pedro, um, and thank you for, for joining us today at The Biblical Perspective. Um, if you'd like to support this ministry, then please subscribe and like this video, and please share it with your friends and family, and anyone who you feel um, really need to hear this message. So uh, we'll see you in our next study. Thank you.